जी नमस्कार मैं डॉक्टर सवर्मा टीम फार्मा की तो आप सभी दर्शकों का माननीय जो गेस्ट हैं और माय मेंटर भी डॉक्टर जी सर प्लीज आज वर्ल्ड फार्मासिस्ट डे के अवसर पे फार्मा लोक ने दो कार्यक्रम का आयोजन किया है जिसमें कि लेक्चर सीरीज जो दस लेक्चर का सीरीज है उस क्रम में ये नौवा लेक्चर होगा आज के दिन का इसके अलावा शाम सात बजे से नौ बजे तक हम फेलिसिटेशन प्रोग्राम करेंगे जिसमें तीन कैटेगरी है एक जो कि हमारा जो पोस्टर ये मेकिंग कंपटीशन हमने कर रखा तो उसके विजेता जो छात्र छात्राएं होंगी उनको हम सम्मानित करेंगे और साथ ही जी पैट जो 2022 में जितने भी बच्चे टॉप रैंक में आए हैं उसमें से प्रथम पांच का भी हम यहाँ फेलिसिटेशन करेंगे और साथ ही हमारे सभी गुरुजन जो ये दस के लेक्चर करके कर रहे हैं अपने वेल्यूबल टाइम में से तो जरा इनके लिए भी हम जरा सब एक मान सम्मान का कुछ कड़ी रखे हैं तो इसी कड़ी में साहू सर बीच में है तो सर की तरफ से जो हमें हमारे पास टॉपिक आया है रोल ऑफ आई क्यू एस सी इन हायर एजुकेशन जो कि आज के yeah. टाइम में सबसे बड़ा ही एक करंट इशू है तो सर जो अनुभव अब पास ज्ञान का इस टॉपिक पे हम सबको दें तो सर आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है फार्मा लोक के मंच पे टीम फार्मा लोक की तरफ से हम आपका बारंबार स्वागत करते हैं जी सर तो प्लीज ओवर टू यू सर प्लीज या या थैंक यू डॉक्टर संतोष कुमार वर्मा सर एंड कैन यू प्लीज शेयर माय स्क्रीन या या Yes, yes. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Santosh Kumar Verma, for your nice introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to thanks uh, uh, thank uh, Dr. Uh, sorry Amit uh, Amit ji and uh, Pharma Look for holding such a nice series of lectures from uh, different uh, speakers. I am very and uh, very much. I am very much thankful to every one of you for uh, you know inviting me. and uh, to speak on the topic iqac so just uh, you know i'll be speaking little uh, uh, about iqac uh, out of my experience and just i'll uh, little bit uh, i'll touch about a white paper document which has been recently uploaded by nac so uh, you know like uh, the white paper document and iqac it is like we have to reimagining assessment and accreditation in higher education in india so next yeah uh, i am jagannath sau uh, director of school of pharmaceutical and population health informatics dit university yeah next yeah Uh, my acknowledgement the figures and materials used for the presentation are drawn from white paper document of uh, nac yeah please next so you know let me introduce what is uh, nac uh, that every one of us we know that the nac uh, that uh, national assessment and accreditation council which was established in the year 1994 and the objective is to raise the quality of higher education and research in india my dear friends and uh, you know it is like how we can improve the quality education and quality research in india and this white paper is an attempt uh, to critically evaluate the strategies to adopt or it is adopted so far towards this aim and explore the potential in initiatives to improve its functioning to help the nation become one of the world leaders in higher education my dear friends today is a pharmacist day and all of we are very proud of this profession and especially when i look at uh, uh, the you know initiatives by our honorable prime minister modi ji that you know two things uh, you know is very important for all of us we to know that uh, you know like uh, modi ji is first dream is to make our country 
to have you know like uh, yeah the uh, bulk drug industry first one is the bulk drug industry and uh, like you know like uh, we are uh, at present we are very proud that our country is able to produce you know third largest in volume in formulations however we are very much dependent on the uh, bulk drug from our neighboring countries china like china so here one is uh, bulk drug industry and the other one is that your bioelectronic devices so here to have a you know like uh, to have a tuning with the initiatives or the futuristic plan of the country i'm sure that uh, you know like uh, our profession our teaching our education should raise and the research also it should have a very high quality research uh, in india from the you know profession of pharmacy so my dear friends that is what you know white paper is an attempt to critically evaluate the strategies adopted so far towards this aim that is aim is quality uh, uh, in higher education and to explore the potential initiatives to improve the its functioning to help the nation become one of the world leaders in higher education to actualize this dream we need to reimagine and enter system of assessment and accreditation such as its scope covers the value effectiveness and efficiency of what tertiary students learn in their courses shaped by the quality of the design and implementation of the program in higher educational institutions my dear friends here what we teach first of all a lot of people you know like uh, we are in a, in the era where we are we have to evaluate ourselves where we stand do the students what the expectations they have or their desires are fulfilled uh, by our education system is it that we are in tune with the temperament of the government of india everything we have to evaluate and that is how you know the uh, that is how we have to improve and that reimagining must start with uh, the very purpose of education as an answer to a fundamental question why do we educate the young that is what the first and fundamental question that all of us we should ask because i understand that uh, today either uh, the most of the participants are uh, teachers or the students so the students also ask themselves why i need uh, education what for i need the education and how can i train myself and the teacher also they they must ask why do we educate the young so next slide please yeah so the higher order cognition proposed in nep all of us we know that uh, what the new education policy says these include the capacities for the self directed independent learning here uh, the term is very big it is self directed independent learning so that is what uh, you know if i ask is it uh, that my students or my scholars are they self directed and do they have uh, you know that independent learning do they read critically critical reading again you know it is a vast term do they read you know what it is written in between the sentences is it uh, critical thinking you know do they have critical thinking uh, hello huh yeah the critical thinking uh, yeah that is uh, how you know like uh, for example you know any 
equation is given or any sentence is given is it the student uh, they are able to think critically okay and is there any rational inquiry innovative problem solving is there any you know uh, if uh, problem is given do the student do, uh, uh, the students are able to solve it innovatively so for example you know being a pharmacy uh, in pharmacy profession so for example you know like uh, our students the teaching methodology it should be like that if i ask in third year you know third year i am giving an example of uh, uh, pharmaceutics you know uh, that is uh, pharmaceutical technology if i ask what is uh, say for example you know after uh, i teach them in uh, the tablet if i ask them i have a hygroscopic compound like uh, paracetamol is a hygroscopic compound so what is the techno what is the, what technology should i do to make a what uh, mouth dissolving tablet so that is you know the each and every student should be able to solve differently and if that comes then we can say that there is a well uh, well innovative problem solving capabilities and they must be very clear precise and they should have effective communication so that is what a holistic and multidisciplinary education would aim to develop all capacities of human beings that is intellectual aesthetic social physical emotional and moral in an integrated manner my dear friends new education policy says that in near future you know uh, or the policy of the government it is like that that uh, none of the courses to be carried out in isolation it has to be multidisciplinary so that say for example today we were talking about uh, bioelectronic medicines you know like if i compare you know the investment or if i see the investment in bioelectronic medicines currently it is very high because the industry they 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 see they see that there will be a good future uh, or there will be a good earning in the future but if if we talk on bioelectronic medicines it cannot be developed in isolation so it has to be you know like we people have to integrate with a good you know neurology department and then we have to integrate with electronics department that is ec electronics and communication department so that is how each and every field is having a you know to be integrated with some other field like we are talking about artificial intelligence then if artificial intelligence in healthcare it will be there then obviously we have to integrate with the uh, computer science people like you know like in india many people they were raising a question that uh, you know the bulk drugs in india it is not you know uh, managed properly because starting from the industry where it is being manufactured and the end user there was a no track on the bulk drug bulk drugs okay and all of us we know that just recently there was a you know government of india has taken a decision that each and every bulk drug will be given with a barcode which can be tracked in between and you know, are starting from the producer to the uh, end user and where it was who uh, it can have a track of everything and my dear friends if i talk on uh, this uh, covid uh, you know in second wave in india and in all over the world even we are talking about the uh, um, the best control over the uh, medicine distribution that is in usa but we have seen in covid that even for the hydroxychloroquine the whole system you know we have seen it was paralyzed and in our country you can see that you know you must have experienced that hydroxychloroquine and the other drugs even you know that uh, uh, drugs 
which is not you know like uh, the distilled water are uh, also it was loaded and it was sold as a drug so how it can be tracked so many people are working on the same and government of india is also looking for some solutions and the solution may come from you people you intelligent uh, you know from your intelligence so how you know people are saying if it can be solved it can be solved only through the blockchain okay so if it will be solved through the blockchain so it is you know like that we people should sensitize that our profession must have to be integrated with the blockchain then only you know there will be a faster solution okay so that is what you know a government of india is looking to have multidisciplinary educations okay so next slide please yeah the new education policy the though all of us we know that uh, but uh, just uh, you know i'll quickly go through it it is a forward looking visionary document it has provided a fresh uh, perspective and made several important recommendations the nep 2020 has addressed the very purpose of education stated as to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action possessing compassion and empathy courage and resilience scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical mornings and values my dear friends if you see that you know like uh, what the nep you know um, the vision of nep it also states a holistic and multidisciplinary education would aim to develop all capacities of human beings my dear friends here to develop all the capacities of human beings that is intellectual aesthetic social physical emotional and moral is an integrated manner so the progressive view on bringing innovation to education and has indicated necessary reforms in the education system next slide please yeah the concept of hei that is uh, higher education institutions or higher education educating and teaching let us uh, understand the, the difference between educating and teaching to understand concept of education it is crucial to compare the process of educating with the process of teaching my dear friends here that is what we have to understand the process of educating and the process of teaching this is a uh, know how to form of knowledge which involves helping someone acquire a skill ability or capacity that is what very important is that how you know that someone should acquire a skill or ability or capacity it involves the capacity building as in capacity for rational inquiry capacity for creative problem solving capacity for creating new knowledge and so on so this requires significant involvement of the mind so the ultimate function of the education is to empower the young to strive towards their own well being and well being of the society nation the human species and the planet with all creatures my dear friends we we should or we must feel very proud that we are in the profession where whole world is looking at us whole world is looking at our capabilities whole world is uh, looking at our creations so that is what you know at least in covid time you know to whom i met everyone sir when this uh, vaccine is going to come everyone was uh, you know uh, they were very curious to know about the quick production of the vaccines so my dear friends that is what our education should you know to empower the young to strive towards their well being and the well being of the society when i am rich then i can say that my society will be rich and ultimately my nation will be rich 
my dear friends you know here if i uh, i'll talk about specific to the pharmacy students in future you know if i talk this is our country is one of the uh, you know um, uh, as far as the hospital is concerned that it has attracted very large number of patients that is what uh, in india now uh, we can say that it is a good uh, hospital tourist they are visiting the country my dear friends what is the expectation of the nation now from us from a pharmacy student or pharmacy profession the nation expects that you know as in the beginning i told our majorly the bulk drug industry should able to produce at the cost of the production what it is happening in near, near nearby uh, country and the second of all if we want to make our country reach then the second part we have to think that uh, the involvement of technology in every field like i told you bioelectronic medicines and the involvement of artificial intelligence in the health care okay so because you know we are again we are very fortunate that if i talk on uh, you know top 10 researches taking place in all over the world we are happy to say that top 5 researches out of 10 it is related to health care so what was you know the problem was very much unsolved before now because of the technological interventions we could solve it very fastly and very quickly okay but we have to ignite the mind of young people that is what you know nep is expecting from our profession next slide please next yeah yeah what what is academic intelligence that is if i say that uh, you know it is having uh, the person is having academic intelligence if are we have trained to have independent learning independent reading independently you know comprehension and communication that the information and understanding my dear friends first of all nowadays the information is in you know from different sources so what are the informations to be taken into account and after taking the information what is my level of understanding then the construction and evaluation of the knowledge after understanding after i acquire the knowledge first of all how do i construct it and how do i evaluate and what is my attitude values and habits of mind my dear friends it is it is mentioned habits of mind the habits of mind you know habits cannot be changed you know immediately so that is what we have to you know like our education system if i talk on one of the you know like uh, most of the pharmacy questions it is memory based you know the time is not there otherwise i would have talked about uh, this uh, bloom's taxonomy so this is again a advanced learning system where we have to inculcate uh, the in the students mind that this uh, they can create you know and you know like uh, they should be very creative is it that our education system is very creative or it is just only a memory based or knowledge so for example as uh, you know few of our components evaluation components it should be like if i make it to open book system probably you know uh, you know uh, either uh, we are not trained the teachers are not trained or the students are not having that mind or that habit is not there so open book is uh, you know it is a very tough task for the uh, teachers also to make a you know at least one of the component uh, of our evaluation 
to open book so that the mind will work or the mind will be pressurized to have a you know uh, outcome of whatever the knowledge it is there okay so that is what habits of mind are we trained only to have a memory based or we train the students to have some creatives creative minds like if i see you know even in new age this uh, white paper document says that you know like if i talk on research habits of mind if i talk on research you know many people they disagree with me but uh, in all the platforms i'll say that that you know the research whatever the research it is carried out in uh, today's scenario it is mostly to get a degree so for example m pharm research work it is mostly to get a degree that is you know i can say that it is a basic research and we are very strong in basic research but you know what the country is looking at the country is looking at to convert the research into product so how we can convert that means to convert the research into earnings how we train the students and if you carry out this project work a, you know what is the outcome of the project work what is the gap it is you have identified or like in most of the you know uh, institutions we see that the teacher ask the you know like say for example prepare a controlled release doses form of diclofenac uh, take diclofenac sodium and mix with uh, hpmc and uh, you know pass through the sieve and so and so and so and so and finally the student gets a controlled release doses form there the student has not utilized his knowledge it was a like a labor work the student has followed the instruction of a teacher without understanding what he is uh, you know what he supposed to do you know so first of all the student must have to be encouraged what they want to do what is the gap they are going to you know from the beginning if they understand the gap and the outcome probably such situation will not be there okay so that is uh, uh, your pragmatic intelligence is the capacity to work for the economic well-being of the oneself that is what i say you know if i do a project if i know that after completion of the my, my project work some of the company you know it may happen or it may not happen it may be like that uh, you know like uh, we may uh, say that uh, we are uh, you know uh, like uh, over enthusiastic but if one or two uh, student they will get such opportunity you can imagine what a recognition will be to uh, for the guide as well as for the institution so well being of the oneself if he is able to earn and ultimately it will be to the community and to the nation and the human species okay my dear friends you know many people they say that you know the research whatever the research it has been carried out it has uh, you know gone to the extreme level my dear friends it is not absolutely correct whatever the research has been taken place many scientists they are agree to that whatever the research it, it has been taken place that is uh, you know 0.1% of the research so 99.9% yet to happen so that is what the student you know a small project work the small outcome may fetch a good result you know for the society and for the human species right so ethical intelligence the ability to make the decisions on the moral rightness and wrongness of action and practices rooted in the ethical values my dear friends again the nep expects that the graduates the new education policy expects that each and every student should have academic intelligence pragmatic intelligence and ethical intelligence also 
if i ask the youngsters that you know what is the most important thing which is challenged now that is ethics you know most of the you know we don't respect the ethics at least we should train our students to <clears throat> have the respect for the ethics at least if we have the respect towards the ethics then the students automatically they will have the respect towards the ethics okay and the person must have physical intelligence like basic knowledge of taking care of one's own physical health you know like at present you know like our job responsibilities and roles are that you know many people are unable to bear the stress of the job getting the job is tough and bearing the stress of the job is also equal equally very very tough that is how you know uh, we must have to train the students to have physical intelligence whenever they are under stress what they can do what they should do and such stress are unavoidable okay so that is what the uh, education system should have the basic knowledge of taking care of one's own physical health yeah uh, next slide please so let us differentiate between assessment and evaluation assessment is the process of arriving at a judgment on the merit of something my dear friends merit of something based on multiple sources of available evidences multiple sources of available evidences it is not assessment is not uh, the assessment to be carried taken on the so uh, evidences given by the hei it, it will be taken from different sources okay what is evaluation evaluation is assigning a value to something evaluation refers to checking for the degree of compliance to a set of indicators so the assessment in contrast is the process of making an estimate of the quality of something in order to evaluate something we need to make an assessment of its quality first so for example we are you know like whatever the, our education you know what we do in the classroom first of all we have to evaluate by ourselves and it has to be evaluated by the others you know what we do whether we are in the right track or not or if you know we cannot say that we are in the wrong tra track a teacher cannot be wrong at any point of time but is there any scope of improvement then let us somebody else to uh, identify and inform so that there will be a holistic development of the student and education system so that is what is accreditation it is a certification resulting from a valid form of assessment based on clearly articulated transparent criteria made by an official assessor or assessing body to the effect that what is under consideration meets the criteria and standards of quality to perform its expected and explicitly articulated function yeah next slide please yeah next slide please yeah thank you functions so let us understand what are the functions of accreditation and assessment that is function a that is quality enhancement is the first function that is notes guide and help hie to improve upon their current quality of education and research what is the function b maintenance of the quality to help the hei to not go down from their current quality you know many institutions we have seen you know when they have gone down you know rising was uh, you know it it is very tough or it was very tough in the recent past first of all we have to understand what are the quality enhancement has to be there okay and who can guide us or who will help the hei to improve upon the current quality and education and research 
okay and what is the function c one is quality enhancement second one is that you have to maintain in that quality you should not degrade or we should not degrade function c that is assessment and, and accreditation use the mechanism of assessment accreditation to serve the function of a and b have develop the right strategy necessary methodology comprehensive rubric and technology enabled precision that is what you know to have the functions of uh, you know accreditation that we will have to develop the right strategy how we can improve you see everyone is saying that you should improve you should improve but what is the strategy to improve and what is the methodology to be adopted what is the comprehensive rubric to be followed and what is the technology which you, which you shall enable the precision okay next slide please yeah so next one is the employability well being and the purpose of the education now if i ask you know that uh, to the students what for you are uh, you know in this course they say it's, you know it's a very true that they will say that we want employment okay so from where the employment will come this is the outcome of the education so outcome of the course now say for example whatever the students you know they are graduated from my institution or from my university are they employable and how we can assure that they are employable or how i can ensure they are employable say you know like most of the institutions like after they the students are graduated now the company come they come and say no your students are not of that quality why you know in that case we have nothing to change we cannot alter but if we know that from the beginning you know to have the employability these are the following methodology to be followed then probably none of the company will come and say that your students are not employable or that so and so students uh, you know they are not employable so that is what the capacity of independent learning that is translated as the capacity to learn what the industry wants them to learn first of all we have to understand like you know the syllabus whatever it is designed is it uh, designed on the basis of uh, industry needs if it is designed then it is well and good if it is not designed so there will be a industry and academia gap will be there right so that is how we have to take feedback from the industry that yes the industry wants that uh, the you know this should be the uh, a graduate pharmacy graduate this should be the quality of a pharmacy graduate you know we have different industries let us take feedback from different industries what is their expectation why they should say you know in the final year that your students are not up to the quality so before to that we can take the feedback from the industry and we can modulate our course okay so the ability to work in the teams you know like there is a big question mark here the ability to work in the teams my dear friends now most of the students those who are coming to the higher studies they are from nuclear family you know like we have you know during our time it was a combined family and we learned a lot from the a combined family but nuclear family you know they live to they have learned to live in isolation so here the ability to work in the teams that we have to take care you know otherwise the industry will never accept it even so that uh, you know he will not be a successful entrepreneur if he is not having the ability to work in the teams and what is his personal intelligence and the capacity to communicate clearly and persuasively the ability to solve the problems and make decision and so on so on so on right 
So next, yeah. What are the benefits of the accreditation? That uh, go back. So, yeah, quickly I'll go through that. The institution to know its strength. When we go for accreditation, the institution will know its strength, weakness, and opportunities through an informed review process. My dear friends, informed review process. If I you know, if I know my strength only. And if I'll not evaluate my weakness or what are the opportunities, probably I don't uh, find myself to grow. Okay. Then identification of internal areas of planning and resource allocation. Then collegeability on the campus. Funding agencies look for objective data for performance funding. Institutions to initiate innovative and modern methods of pedagogy. New sense of direction and identity for institutions. And the society look for reliable information on quality education offered. Then employers look for reliable information on the quality of education offered to the prospective recruiters. Then intra and inter-institutional interactions. So these will be the benefits. Next slide, please. Yeah, internal quality assurance cell. First of all, I request you know those who are the policy makers or those who are the administrators. So they should establish you know, quality assurance cell in their respective institutions. They can, you know, even if they are not uh, friendly to have the internal quality assurance cell, if they need some help in future, they can ask me. Certainly, I'll be helping you to info, you know, to establish an internal quality assurance cell. In pursuance of its action plan for performance, evaluation, assessment, and accreditation and quality upgradation of institutions of higher education, NAC proposes that every accredited institution should establish an internal quality assurance cell as a post-accreditation quality sustenance major you know after accreditation the iqsc will maintain that is what it is uh, mentioned post accreditation quality sustenance major since the quality enhancement is a continuous process the iqsc will become a part of the institution system and work towards realization of goals of quality enhancement and sustenance the prime task of IQSC is to develop a system for conscious, consistent, and catalytic improvement in the overall performance of the institution. For this, during the post-accreditation period, it will channelize all efforts and measure of the institution towards the promoting its holistic academic excellence. Right? So that is what the IQSC. Okay. So first of all, we have to identify very, you know, those who are very much potential and those who are very much enthusiastic to work in the IQSC. Because the quality of the institution in future, quality of the institution means simple, the outcome based. What are the qualities inculcated during the education of your graduates? Okay, first of all, we have to, you know, like uh, we have to uh, frame the graduate attributes and then how we can get those attributes, how we can achieve those attributes. So we have to have a strategic planning. Who will do the strategic planning? This IQSC cell will do the strategic planning. Next slide, please. Yeah. So what are the strategy? IQSC shall involve mechanism and procedure for ensuring timely, efficient, and progressive performance of academic, administrative, and financial task. My dear friends, here it is the it, it, it will not take care of only academics, it will take care of academics, administrative also. Like a institution will be called as a you know 
better institution if all these three qualities are well planned and strategically you know it is maintained one is academic administrative and financial task the relevance and quality of academic and research programs equitable access to to and affordability of academic programs for various sections of the society then optimization and integration of modern methods of teaching and learning and the credibility of evaluation procedures here what are the evaluation procedures are being adopted what is the credibility so for example i have taken a evaluation procedure but finally that evaluation procedure itself is having some faults so what is the credibility of that evaluation procedure right then ensuring the adequacy maintenance of the functioning of the support structure and services research sharing and networking with other institution in india and abroad next slide please yeah development and application of quality benchmarks here development and application of quality benchmarks if i say if i say that you know i am the best teacher then probably some someone else may reject it so if i have gone through a quality benchmarks and someone you know the after uh, getting the quality benchmarks if someone will claim that okay you know that uh, institution is one of the best institution then uh, other people will accept it and what are the parameters for various academic and administrative activities of the institution that is you know facilitating the creation of learner centric environment conductive to the quality education and faculty maturation to adopt the required knowledge that is what you know here it is mentioned faculty maturation to adopt the required knowledge and technology for participatory teaching and learning processes so arrangement for feedback responses from the students here feedback is very essential feedback responses from the students parents and other stakeholders on quality related institutional process so for example at present you know like what we teach in the classroom are, are we taking the feedback from the students in different interval of time and the feedback should not be taken after completion of the course in between also the feedback to be taken to ensure that the quality of education is taken place and the parents are also respond you know they should give the feedback yes you know when they ask their boards or they have selected your organization there must be some aspiration of the parents also is it fulfilled then the feedback supposed to be given by the parents and other stakeholders as i told you the alumni members and the industry because industry you know when they will take your product and they will give a remark yes they are usable then you can say that the institution the methods the teaching learning processes are in the good shape okay then dissemination of information on various quality parameters of higher education then organization of inter and intra institutional workshops seminars on quality related themes and promotion of quality circles next slide please yeah the documentation of the various para programs activities leading to quality improvement my dear friends all of us we are doing wonder i can say that you are contributing a lot for the improvement of the students performances but is it documented say for example we have a poor student poor means you know every student in my uh, terminology every student is a tendulkar they can do a wonder but some student is poor in the studies it is not like that he is poor in all other activities but what we have contributed each and every one of you must have contributed you know giving question papers giving assignments asking him to come to the chamber and to teach but is it documented if it is not documented that is you know like uh, we people are very poor in the documentation so we have to have you know document on the same 
acting on a nodal agency of the institution or coordinating quality related activities including adoption and dissemination of the best practices like i told you what we are doing for a first learner you know we got a student always we remember the best students and the best the students they remember the best teachers forever when we are you know if we get you know a very sharp mind student what we are giving extra to them if we are not able to give extra that means we are killing a young mind ignited mind so that is what you know we have to think differently so here development again development and maintenance of institutional database through mis or for the purpose of maintaining maintaining enhancing the institutional quality then development of quality culture in the institution that is what the culture has to be developed yes everyone should work you know the institution cannot uh, improve in quality if everyone is not contributing that is what previous slides we have discussed we have to train a mind we have to inculcate that yes quality is essential okay then preparation of the one annual quality assurance report aqr as per the guidelines and parameters of the nac to be submitted to the nac okay next slide please yeah what are the benefits ensure you know heightened level of clarity and focus in institutional functioning towards the quality enhancement ensure internalization of the quality culture ensure enhancement and uh, coordinating uh, coordination among various activities of the institution and institutional institutionalize all good practices provide a sound basis for decision making to improve institutional functioning act as a dynamic system for quality changes in hci build an organized methodology of documentation and internal communication yeah next slide please yeah so this is most awaiting slide so i can be connected in future dr janna sir at the rate uh, gmail.com so if you have any queries uh, anyone can ask anything even it, if it is beyond the syllabus you can ask me thank you thank you dr sir uh, such a nice and comprehensive uh, presentation uh, on the iqac cell and its uh, function execution and uh, they are all about to so i think aaj ka jaise se level badhta ja raha hai ye lecture ka waise waise uh, uska jo essence hai wo bhi high hota ja raha hai i think this is the second last lecture in the lecture series of two days uh, on the occasion of world pharmacist day to so, ye mere hisab se hamare jitne bhi young teachers hain बॉडी टीचर्स हैं सबके लिए बहुत ही मायने रखने वाला प्रेजेंटेशन क्योंकि हर इंस्टीट्यूट में या फिर यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल पे नैक इज कंपलसरी जो 2023 तक का टारगेट दिया गया नैक कराना ही कराना है तो सबके लिए ये रेफर करने वाला लेक्चर रहेगा मेरा ये मानना है गंभीरता के साथ अभी जो ऑनलाइन जुड़े हैं उनके लिए भी और बाद में भी इस लेक्चर को डेफिनेटली रेफर किया जाने वाला है तो सर आपने इतनी जानकारी दी बहुत ही सरल तरीके से बड़े ही सिंप्लीफाइड वे में आपने जितनी चीज़ें पूरी करी है डेफिनेटली सर हेड्स ऑफ फॉर यू और हम मानते हैं कि हमारे जितने भी दर्शक हैं वो इसे लाभान्वित हुए होंगे और आगे भी जैसा कि मैंने कहा एक इस लेक्चर सीरीज में से इस खास इस लेक्चर को आई के वास्ते रेफर किया जाएगा डेफिनेटली सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू एंड आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू यू सर and uh, amit ji and uh, specially to the pharma log for arranging such a wonderful platform thank you sir sir because of you all uh, to, uh, from the side of team pharma log and our mentor of pharma log uh, i uh, want to uh, thanks to you uh, and uh, again and again uh, you come uh, at our this platform to enlighten us with your wisdom and knowledge thank you sir Thank Wishing you sir. Thank you. Happy so World Pharmacy Day 2020. Thank you sir. Same to you. Thank you.